Have you ever watched an English movie or a video clip and thought to yourself, what are they saying? Are they even speaking English? If this has ever happened to you, you are not alone. I've had so many students come up to me and say, Anika, I understand everything you are saying to me, but when I watch an English movie or when I'm speaking to my English speaking colleagues in a meeting, I don't understand anything. Now, understanding spoken English can be difficult, especially if you're not a frequent English listener, um, for two main reasons. Firstly, in real life situations, people tend to speak really fast. If you're speaking to an English teacher, normally teachers tend to slow things down to make it easier for students to understand, but this does not happen in real life. So when people speak fast, it's easy to miss some words that you may hear. Secondly, as you may already know, English is not, not pronounced as it is written. So it can be easy to misunderstand one word for another. Um, so it's important to be aware of different production of sounds in English. Now, listening is very connected to pronunciation. So if you become aware of certain uh, tricks and techniques of, of pronunciation, you will drastically improve your listening skills. So stay tuned to look at three secrets of improving your listening skill. My name is Anika. I'm an English teacher. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up and give a comment below or for any questions or any suggestions for future videos. Also, if you'd like to see more videos like this, make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell for more videos like this every Saturday. Now let's get started. Secret number one is that English is a lazy language. What that means is that not every word is pronounced clearly. Um, in a naturally spoken sentence or a naturally spoken qu question. Um, only words that have more important meaning are pronounced clearly. And on the other hand, words that are not very important or don't carry a lot of meaning are sort of suppressed or you can't almost hear them in some cases. So these unimportant words are usually the prepositions, the articles, pronouns or auxiliary verbs. Um, even if you don't hear these words, you can still make sense out of the, the sentence or the question that the speaker is saying. Now, I'll show this to you with an example. Have a look at this sentence. It was nice chatting with you. It was nice chatting with you. Um, this is what I would say if I say it naturally. But instead, if I emphasize every single word and say, it was nice chatting with you, it sounds a bit unnatural or robotic. You don't usually hear that in real life. Instead, um, have a look at this, the words that I have emphasized. Words like nice. Nice is an important word, not, a, a meaningful word here, because I'm saying it was nice chatting with you and not horrible chatting with you or fantastic chatting with you. It was nice chatting with you. Chatting is again uh, quite important because I'm saying what it was that I was doing with you. It wasn't. I, it was a nice eating with you or it was a nice jogging with you. It was nice chatting with you. Um, so instead, the words that are not very important, for example, it was, they don't have really big meaning. So I sort of said them very quickly. I said almost it was, not it was, but it was. Again, with you weren't really important. So I said with you the words sort of blend together instead of emphasized or pronounced clearly. So next time you're watching an English movie, make sure to take note of these um, differences in emphasis when you say some, um, when you say words naturally in sentences and try to repeat them. Imitating that native speakers is a really great technique, not to just improve your listening skills, but to Im improve your pronunciation skills. Two is that words blend together. What I mean by that is words are pronounced certain ways when they are pronounced individually, but when you string them together in sentences, they can sound very different. So when words blend together, um, some sounds completely disappear in some cases. Some, some sounds at the end of words or the beginning of words completely disappear. And in some other cases, um, some sounds, some very unique different sounds, merge together and produce something completely different. So I'll show this to you with an example. Have a look at this sentence. I didn't do it. I didn't do it. 
Notice that the didn't is not pronounced um, with the T in it. I, it's as if I almost said, didn't do it. Okay, so it's very common that the last T of many negative auxiliary verbs are completely uh, not pronounced in many cases. Another example, I can't believe it. I can't believe it. As if I'm saying I can rather than can't. I can't believe I did this. I can't believe I did this. I can't believe I did this. Another very common example of this is the pronunciation of H. Individual words starting with H are pronounced with a H sound like house, horse, he her, etc. But when you say them in a sentence with another word before it, um, sometimes you drop the H. Have a look at this sentence, for example. I'll make him an offer he can refuse. I'll make him. I'll make him. I didn't say I'll make him an offer, but I'll make him an offer. So this is a really common phenomena when you're using H in a sentence. Tom? Hey, Mike, are you sure about that? Mo loves the business. He never said nothing to me about selling. Yeah, well, I'll make him an offer he can't refuse. Now let's observe some um, production of new sounds while you combine two different sounds together. Have a look at this sentence. I want you to do it. I want you to do it. So the T of want blends together the y with the Y of you and becomes a CH sound. So I want you to do it, not I want you to do it. I could say that, but it wouldn't sound very natural. Instead, I want you to do it sounds more natural. Another example would be, where did you go? Where did you go? I did not say, where did you go? Sometimes D and Y can blend together and become a J, J sound. So to improve your listening skills, try to be observant of these linking words. Um, whenever you hear something that doesn't sound how it's written, try to pause the video when you're watching a movie, for example. Pause the movie and try to repeat and imitate the speakers just like they are saying it. Um, now, secret number three is to listen even if you don't understand anything. So don't, do not pressure yourself into understanding every single word that you hear. So even if you understand 50% of what you're hearing, just keep listening. For example, when you're cleaning around the house, try to listen to an English music. Or when you're driving a car, try to um, listen to your favorite podcast and try to expose yourself to as much uh, as many English sounds as possible. So you can actually pick up a lot of sounds from different places and you'll be amazed by just how only listening without understanding can even drastically improve your listening skills. There you have it, our three secrets of improving your listening skills. First of all, remember English is a lazy language, so not every word is pronounced clearly. Secondly, remember that words link together or sounds blend together to sometimes produce e either to produce a new sound or sometimes some sounds are completely eliminated. And number three, remember to listen even if you don't understand anything. Thank you for watching. I hope this has been useful for you. Have an awesome weekend and I'll see you next Saturday.